Hmm. Right. What would be an example of a poorly performing team and why would we think they were performing poorly? Well, if you look at the textbooks, if you go to the internet of knowledge, you'll often find them talking about things like velocity. So step one, ignore that. Utter nonsense. Because a team is moving at 10 points a sprint or 100 points a sprint tells you nothing about its performance. Looking at how it's doing compared to previous sprints might tell you something. But it might tell you that they're working on a really hard thing at the moment and they don't know the way around it and they're doing lots of work and they're working very hard and they're making progress but not in delivering stuff. So get rid of that. It's not very useful outside of capacity planning. What we need to start looking at is how they act, how they interact. Are they taking data in as a team, paying attention to it, giving it the respect it's due, okay, and acting on that information? You'll notice the empirical pillars coming into play there of transparency, inspection, and adaptation. Is the information available to them? Is it understandable by them? Are they paying attention to it? And are they making hypotheses, potential improvements as a result and learning from that and repeating the cycle? And if they are, we've got at least a team that is working towards being better. And we've likely got a team that is getting good quickly. But if they're not, trouble is ahead. They're not necessarily poorly performing. They may have been brilliant and have fallen foul of that rut of thinking they're brilliant, of being stuck in the same place, thinking that because they're better than everybody they can see, they'll remain there forever. They're going down, but they're not necessarily a poorly performing team yet. They're one to catch before they become one though. What I'm really looking for and what would set red flags for me with teams are ones that don't talk, ones that don't take time to understand problems together they just fed more work ones that don't discuss design of their product they don't talk about how they're going to solve it they don't talk about the potential risks and pitfalls and opportunities and research ideas and the new stuff that's happening all of this conversation is just gone then you've got the hallmarks of a poorly performing team the ones that can't talk or won't talk are invariably in a bad place and it becomes our role to understand why is this is it that they think they're so awesome that they don't need to talk anymore they believe that they've got I don't know ESP telepathy whatever it is they think they've got or is it that they've believed that hype themselves they believe they're too good and they, they, there's no point in improving on perfection because it's not possible have they drunk that Kool-Aid? Or is it because there's a thing happening in the team, there's a person or an event, there's some sort of foreign element to the teamwork that has been introduced that is stifling that collaboration and that communication? Is it stopping them speaking? Maybe somebody's been promoted and they don't know how to handle that. Maybe somebody's joined the team and their personality is quite toxic to that team's culture and they haven't yet worked out how to bring that person into the fold if that's what the right thing is. Our role here is to start surfacing these, okay? not by telling people what's happening, but by creating conversations. Maybe one-on-one -on -one to start. If you're in a particularly toxic environment, they often won't speak up in the group because that psychological safety, that's such an important part, is missing. They don't believe that they can say things openly and honestly without fear of retribution. They believe they're going to be attacked, maybe by a new person, maybe by existing team members, whatever. So we're going to start talking to people potentially one on one at the start and slowly into small groups and then the whole group to create a conversation about understanding why they are where they are. So teams that aren't communicating are really, for me, one of the big red flags. Others are ones who ignore data. Okay. They create through the process of their work, lots and lots of data, they're doing stuff. Okay. And poorly performing teams often just keep doing it. 
They don't look at that data that they're generating. They don't take the time to reflect, look for improvements, or at least recognize where the potential pitfalls are for what they do. They just go again and again and again and again. And this, maybe they're good, but they're not gonna be for very long. They're gonna be poorly performing very quickly because if you're not improving in the knowledge world, you are most definitely getting worse because human behaviors are gonna come back. Bad habits are gonna creep in. You're gonna not take that opportunity to seek an improvement. You're probably not gonna have a conversation about what happened and you're not gonna stop it occurring again. So it's coming back. You don't know when, you don't know why, but it's coming back. All of these things start mounting up and slowly your team will slow down. It will fall off its performance peak or wherever that may have been. Not actively, not consciously. Actually for me, even worse, unconsciously and because of inaction. Because they're not taking the time to improve, they're not taking that data in and learning, they're gonna become worse purely because they're human. Our role here is absolutely vital. Okay? And it is incredibly important we approach it respectfully. They're not wrong. Okay? Teams that fall into this trap are often good teams. They're definitely good people, certainly in the main. What we need to do is help them understand because you're not paying attention to your data, maybe anymore, maybe you never have, because you're not willing to take time out to reflect on why things didn't go as you planned, okay? your bad habits are gonna come back. Things that you could have solved and never seen again are gonna come back. Okay? Take the time out to improve. Otherwise, you're gonna slowly drift downwards and without realizing it, be a poor performing team. So there's two things for you about performance. They're the, really the two main things I'm looking for. Are teams talking? Are they safe to say things that they want to, at least within the team structure? And are they paying attention to the data that their work creates? And at least making sure that they maintain a steady state. If not, and ideally for me, they're looking for ways constantly to be better as a team. If you've got to this point in the video, I hope you've enjoyed it. If so, a like would be appreciated. If you wanna hear more from me, more answers to questions that maybe you've got in the Agile world, please subscribe to the channel. And if you've got a question that you really want answered, drop it in the comments, I promise we'll get around to it. Thank you.